still don't know where the thing is. It's supposed to be back here somewhere. If this doesn't work, we're gonna end up dumping in the toilet. Shut off the macerator. Oh, crap. <laughs> Literally. Oh my God. Oh. That's gross. Have you ever been in a situation where you needed to dump your tanks, but just didn't have easy access to a dump station? In this video, we're gonna show you how you can dump your tanks while at home. We are Charity, Ben, Dakota, and Trinity. We decided we didn't want to wait for a life of adventure. So in 2017, we bought our first RV and set off to live a life of travel in the USA. We've visited over 38 states in three years and have many more to go. Follow along to learn all the best places to see, RV and travel tips, and much more. So for the last week, we have been mooch docking at my sister's house. And what mooch docking is, is when you park your rig or your camper, your RV at somebody's residence, or maybe it's a farm, some situation where it's not your typical campground. You don't have access to your normal RV hookup. And it's kind of like boondocking, but not really because you probably have access to at least a few things, which is exactly the situation that we are in right now. So our little mooch docking spot that we have here in Colorado. We are just hooked into the household electric, which is 110, and we have access to water. So we're hooked up to a water spigot, but we have no sewer options at all. So now we've been here for a week and we desperately need to dump our tanks. And so we're gonna be able to do that right here at her house. So we'll get into how that works in just a few minutes, but the options that you have if you're in a mooch docking situation like we are right now is there's a couple different things depending upon what facilities are available at that particular property. So where we are, they're actually on a septic system. So we're gonna be able to dump into that septic system today with just a garden hose and a macerator pump, which we'll show you how to use. The other option that you have is you can still use that garden hose and macerator pump and dump directly into a toilet in the house. Or if they have a sewer, if they're on a city sewer, the sewer cleanouts in a lot of places you can dump directly into there. Now with the sewer clean out, because that would be owned by the city that that system is serviced by, you would want to just double check, cover some bases and make sure that that is allowed. If it's not allowed, just dump right into the toilet in the house. So let's go ahead and go around the side of the RV and let's get this puppy hooked up and start dumping the tanks. So where we're parked at, at my sister's property, she actually has a horse and there is an electric fence that runs around where that the horse goes. So <laughs> where we're parked is kind of right next to this particular fence area that has this electric fence and uh, Ben already got zapped once. So we've got to be a little cautious here coming around to where all of our sewer hookup is <laughs> so that uh, we don't get zapped by the feds. Hey Steve, how you doing man? Good. Hey, I've got a question for you. So what we're doing is we are going to go ahead and dump the tanks into the septic system okay. and it's the RV is obviously pretty close to the fence. And uh, I got zapped the other day and it, <laughs> it kind of hurts, it hurts pretty bad. So I was wondering, is there any way that I could temporarily unplug it while I grab, get the hose shut, out of it? Shut the electric fence just, off is what yeah, he's asking. Yeah, unplug the electric fence temporarily. Do you have any on a speakerphone? Is there kids around? No, no it's no. just me. Stop being such a <laughs> <laughs> oh, if, you walk, if you walk straight back where the two gates are, yeah, you'll see the, it's right there, just unplug it. Okay. Right, on, right beside the gate. All right, so we're just gonna shut off the electric fence. Make sure that we don't have any problems, especially since we're dealing with things that are wet. Probably better safe than sorry on yeah. this one. So we'll go do that real fast. So while Ben's shutting off the electric fence, I think now would be a good time to kind of explain a little bit how a macerator pump works. 
and that is it it grinds up anything that's semi-solid so it can move it through the pipe but the really cool thing about the way a macerator works is you know the saying that certain things you know, flow downhill right well this actually makes it possible to pump those things uphill so whether you are dumping into a toilet in the house or something else you don't have to worry so much about gravity because this is actually a pump that is going to pump these liquids into wherever you need them to go so that's kind of the cool thing about having a macerator even if you normally stay at rv parks it's a nice thing to be able to carry with you in case you ever find yourself in this type of situation okay so it's already unplugged now so did you want to go ahead and test it? No, grab it. And, Let's and, see. Uh, make sure it's uh, off. <laughs> touch it. <laughs> no. I don't want to touch it. You should just touch it. No. I'm not going to touch it. I think you should just touch the fence. Okay, so I keep all of the sewer stuff in one compartment dedicated to its all the sewer stuff so and then i keep the fresh water stuff in a different compartment in our class a rv this is the macerator here so this is actually a pump that's going to pump out the waste from here into the septic system so this actually was included with our old 2000 pace arrow so this is an older macerator and uh, the guy actually put this uh, bayonet on it so you can just hook it right up to this pipe and then on the other end there's a switch that you can turn the pump off and on and then there's two uh, alligator clips one for the positive one for the negative that we're going to hook up straight to the battery then once i'm ready the valves open i'll turn it on pump it out. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start with the black first because uh, just like you empty your tank with the hose, you want to empty the black first, then do the gray because the gray will wash out uh, any of the black. That way you have a nice and uh, cleaner hose at the end of the dump. So this is the macerator that was given to us. So this is the one we're going to use and we don't want to just go out and buy something if we don't need it yet. So we're going to use this until it dies. But if you need to get one, we're going to put a link down below to the one that we recommend by Flowjet and uh, you can click on that link to get the best macerator that'll work for you. The next thing we're going to need is a garden hose. So this is actually a three quarter inch. It's the biggest hose that you can get um, that we are going to hook up to the macerator pump. And so this is a, a nice and long hose that's gonna basically get us right out to the opening of the sewer or if you're going to a toilet so this is this hose actually i have break into three different sections so sometimes you're going to need a longer length sometimes you're going to need a shorter length so i might only need one section of this hose and we will put a link to the hose that i recommend down below in the description so now we're going to get this hooked up so first thing is you want to un take off the cap then Hook up the macerator from the ban the bayonet to the pipe. Okay, lock it in. As a person who built this macerator, was uh, was a genius because there's a clear section here where the waste goes through. So that way you can see when it's finished up, so you don't keep it running. One other option you can do is if you get a clear, if you want to build this or put it together you can get a clear to clamp on so you have a nice like clear elbow to see it as well. And the next thing I'm going to do is hook up the hose to this and then hook up these alligator clips to the battery. So we're gonna hook up this end right up to the macerator. Make sure it's got a nice and tight connection there so we don't have any leaks. When you're doing a job like this, you definitely do not want any type of leakage going on. So then I take this connection here. They all have a fuse built into them. So that way, if you do have any issues with crossing the wires, it will break at the fuse. So let's hook this up to the battery bank, pull this open. 
Here's our batteries. Red is positive, black is negative. So we're gonna go and clip right onto the battery here. Whoa, it's on. Here, let me turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> First thing you're going to want to do is make sure the macerator's off. <laughs> That's going in the bloops. Then let's go ahead and put the negative connection on. And as you can see, that's all hooked up, ready to go. It's really simple. Then the next step is to take the hose and stretch it all the way down to the sewer or the toilet or whatever you need to dump it at. You know, you're really good at untangling messes these days. Story of my life. <laughs> Everybody makes a mess. Charity, can you come fix this mess that I just made? Of course, why not? It's definitely your MO, fixing my messes. Why would I not come fix your mess? So let's actually lay this one out first, because that, see, look, okay, there, one, one section. So we just need to make sure my hose is long enough here. Let's bring this all the way down. We have to make it all the way down to there. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Huh. I'm holding the same hose you were. Oh. <laughs> I, I thought like, I was dragging the other piece. It was me. Hold on. Do I need to go unkink you? No. Nope. Okay. I'm not going there. Let's see if my hose is long enough. There's one more section. Good. <laughs> I still don't know where the thing is. It's supposed to be back here somewhere. If this doesn't work, we're gonna end up dumping in the toilet, which we'll still need the hose for, but we will have drug all this hose out for nothing. So I hope that the hose is long enough. Nail biter, cue dramatic music right here. Oh man, I'm not sure if this is gonna be long enough. It's right there. We don't have far right. to go. All right, well, let's see. This is the last section of hose. Worst case scenario, we can just run to Home Depot and, and grab one more. I think there is a limit on the length of the hose that you can have. Let me know in the comments below if you know what that is. I've heard 150 feet, but I've ran this macerator hose so far over 100 feet at our home base, and I haven't had any issues with the macerator heating up or anything, so hasn't died yet. So, well, let's see if this will work. There's the horse. Hey, horse. See, it's right there. I think we're good. Oh, man. I think we're good. Okay, no, look, look, look. Just come on this side of the fence post. Okay. Do you see? Come oh, on this inside okay. of the bushes. All right. I thought my hose was too short. It may not be too short after all. You could still come. A little bit. Oh, no, this will work. To this, okay. <gasps> no way. Is it like just barely? <gasps> this literally, we don't have a foot to spare. Wow. It does say. Vaughn. Vaughn. I, I read not it waste. said Vaughn. <laughs> I want to make sure it doesn't say water or or well. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and lift this bad boy up. And I forgot to mention, make sure you have gloves on during this whole process. So. <clears throat> Does it sink? Oh. That's gross. That's pretty gross. But that's where it's gonna go. I think we're in the right spot. So we're gonna go and roll this. Roll the stone away. Stone away. We're gonna go ahead and put the hose down here. So what I'm going to do, to, just to make sure that the hose doesn't fly all over the place and, you know, spray poo all over the yard, I'm gonna go ahead and set this on top of the hose a little bit just to hold it in place. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick. Just barely, just to kind of hold it. We don't wanna crush it. There, so that's gonna hold it in place so it doesn't, it's not like there's that much pressure, but just so it doesn't, you know, flap all over the place. It's not like a fire hydrant Yeah, pressure. it's not like gonna be like, shh. With the poo hose. Yeah. All right, so now it's time to let her roll. 
And you know what rolls downhill. And we're actually kind of going downhill, but... Shall we? We shall. You ready for this? Ready. I hope this works. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is open up the black first, turn on the macerator pump, then we're gonna go to the other end and make sure it's coming out as it should. Then, once that's finished, we're gonna go ahead and open the gray and make sure that goes through. Oh, oh, oh. That's okay, it, there it is. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go see if it's here, coming out on the other end. Here, take the camera See if it's working. I'll wait here. All right. Oh. I hope it's working. Okay. Oh, yep, you can hear it. Oh my gosh, it's working. All right. I'd call that a success. Shut off the macerator. Oh crap. <laughs> Literally. Oh my God. When you hear the macerator making a high-pitched noise, it basically means it's finished. So close now we want to open up the gray tank, close the black, and now the gray is going to flush out the hose and we're emptying the gray tank. And you might notice a different color hose here. I'm going to spare you the details, but let's just say that hose was a little old. It was a little old. All right, so it's done. Just gonna get the re the rest of it out right here, so you can see it's all finished up. And shut it off. And folks, we just emptied our black and gray tank with using a macerator pump. All right, so let's go ahead and put this back on. Ugh. And we're good to go. All right, so. We got it done. <laughs> uh, we had a little issue that will spare you the details, but that's why you sit here when you do this and you make sure. So if you need to close off any valves quickly, you can make sure that you do that um, and handle anything before it becomes a major disaster. <laughs> so got everything good to go. Tanks are dumped into the septic here and hopefully we'll be good for another week. I was really impressed that that yeah. lasted us a week on the black. Especially with so. two kiddos. Now, a couple of tips real fast when you are mooch talking when it comes to electric. So a couple of tips that we wanted to share about electric while mooch docking. So we are just plugged into the household outlet, which is just a 110 outlet. We don't have a 30 amp or a 50 amp. So we have to be a little bit cautious about our power usage. So we have to be aware of how much power that we're using so that we don't trip the breaker in the house and then constantly have to be resetting the breaker. So we do have a power management system that is in our RV and it's really easy to see just at a glance how many amps that we're using in any given moment. So one thing that we are doing is if we need to run say our electric griddle for cooking we're not going to run that at the same time as we're running say the microwave. We're also not running our ACs yet. We have a future video to come on a awesome way that we will be able to use AC while hooked up to a house. So make sure that you're subscribed because that will be coming in the next couple of weeks. But in the meantime, we're just staying cognizant of what the draw is and how much power that we're using in any given moment to be able to have the power we need to continue daily life without running into any issues at all. If you have any tips for mooch docking, you will have to let us know in the comments below. With campgrounds getting fuller than they've ever been, and also with those rates of campgrounds starting to rise, being able to mooch dock, if that's something that's an option, is a great way to still be able to get out and to travel. So you'll have to let us know in the comments below what your experience has been with mooch docking. We want to say a huge thank you to all of you that are jumping in and supporting us on Patreon. You can check that out over at gratefulglamper.com forward slash Patreon. And we're going to be starting some giveaways next week for all of you that are on Patreon. So be watching for that soon. If you're in our Patreon group, if not, 
then you can go ahead and get started with that today. Is it on? Okay. Just hang on. Just hang on. So what we're doing to make sure that we don't blow a fuse in the house so that it, it's not an inconvenience, a fuse, no. Breaker. Trip the breaker. <laughs> the camera shaky right there. It was your fault for hitting me in the butt. <laughs> Just saying. If you'd like to watch some more videos with RV life tips, tricks, organization, perhaps you can check those out right over here. And if you would like to see videos about fun places that you know you're gonna wanna put on your travel bucket list, you can check those out right over here. Until next time, we'll see you on the road.